So sometimes when I'm working with an image, I'm going to use Photoshop. So I'm going to take you through looking at this image that I've just popped into Photoshop and the sort of things that I could do to try and mix it up and create some new ideas of how I could use it in a painting. So um, I'll just talk you through what I'm doing. So first of all, I am, I've created a new layer by clicking the new layer button. And I am just going to cover that layer with the paint bucket, which is there hiding under the gradient. Um, and I'm going to pop that lovely red colour in it. Now I'm going to use the, um, the layer filters here. And you can see as soon as you do that, it mixes the two layers together. And there's lots of choices down the list and they're all fabulous. So um, I'll go through and I'll see if that gives me any ideas. It just might mean that I might want to use that colour through the whole painting if it looks really good or these exclusion and different ones, different um, filters are, are quite interesting. You know, they might give you new ideas for what you might want to do. Um, so I'll just have a little scroll through that and see how it feels. Um, yeah, and obviously you can pick whatever colour that you might, might want to try and I'll show you in a bit how to change that colour easily to uh, scroll through some different options. Um, but now to get a little bit more precise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the quick selection tool to just select the figures um, and see what happens then. So that's this kind of, and you just need to do it really generally. It doesn't need to be super detailed. Um, it's just to get an, get an idea, get an impression. Because after all, when we're painting from the photograph, you want to leave yourself lots of room for interpretation and lots of room for doing your own thing and not feel too hemmed in by the photograph itself. Um, I just find this is a really good way to start the ball rolling um, and give me a good idea of what colour to put down right at the beginning um, before I start mucking about a bit more. Um, and then getting ideas as I paint. So things aren't completely mapped out in the beginning, they're not completely prescribed. Sometimes I have just one general idea that I'll develop as I go through. Now, so you see what I'm doing here, I'm adding to the selection. I'm minus from the selection, holding down the option key on my MacBook, um, and then shift is adds to the selection. And for some reason, when you cut and paste something, a selection on Photoshop, it starts a new layer, but doesn't put the layer back right in the same place. So I've just shifted it around there, but you can see it's on a new layer now. I've popped that layer on top, so now you can see that the people are a different colour to that background. And then I've made a new layer. So I'm going to make the people um, have their own colour. Um, you know, it can be any colour. Just guess something and have a look later, have a little change. Go back to the paint bucket, fill that layer all with yellow. And then go back to the blending filter layers. I think that's what they're called, blending layers. Um, and go down the list to see how that feels some really nice ideas there. Those ones are looking a bit too harsh, but I like these ones where it looks a little bit more subtle. The soft light, really nice. And that's adding in a tint of blue and then when you go down to difference you get the opposite um, so that can sometimes give you um, a whole new outlook or something you could do but what I decided to do because I can see that this layer this um, yellow layer that I've put on is affecting the red layer as well um, and changing that nice red that I've put down as it goes through so I'm going to try and do something in a second to isolate the people a bit more um, Oh, first of all, here we go. I'm going to show you about hue saturation. So that was Command U on the MacBook, or else it's under the um, Adjustments uh, menu. So that's hue saturation, and you can change the hue, which is the colour. So I'm changing that yellow layer to all these different colours here to see if this does anything interesting. Maybe this should be a blue painting or a green painting. Not sure. And the saturation so they can take the intensity of the colour up and down as well. Okay. And I'm going 
going to play with the red layer as well. So I'll click on the red layer and we'll see what that does. There we go. So that's quite nice with the green and the blue background. Yeah, I'm quite into that. Yeah, I'm going to click OK. And obviously you can save different versions as you go along. So you can save multiple different versions of whatever colour ways um, you're interested in. And then you can have a think later on and compare and contrast. But yeah, now uh, I'm going to go and see if I can isolate those that colour on the figures a bit more so it's not affecting the other layers. So there's my figure cut out. You can see how rough that is, but it didn't seem to matter, does it, when it's all together? And I'm going to use the um, magic wand tool. The magic wand selects big areas. So I can select all that plain background. And then I can go to select inverse to just select the people. Click on the yellow layer. Now that selection is sitting on the yellow layer. And then select inverse again and delete all that yellow that's around it that was affecting that background beforehand. So just the figures are yellow now. So now when I click on everything else, you see it's much more clear cut. So we've got quite definite blue and quite definite yellow there. It's quite weird, it's a bit Monty Python-esque, isn't it? But um, I do like the, um, the contrast. Obviously uh, yellow and blue are kind of complementary colours, or orange and blue strictly speaking, but um, that's always going to be a, a nice idea to use complementary colours and see how that feels, or, or, or varying tones, obviously, of complementary colours, not, not the pure primaries, but um, some sort of colours along the way. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm going to add a bit more subtlety to those colours by adding a gradient. So I'm on the blue layer, and I'm selecting a foreground colour and a background colour, which I like. So... I'm just thinking about what those two colours are. I'm going to go with a, a sort of green and the original kind of dark blue that I had. So there you can see on my colours on the left there, I've got a green in the foreground, a blue in the background. I set the gradient tool, and then when you stretch this little line across, it makes this ombre effect of the two colours that you've chosen. So you can play around with that and see how that feels and if that's something that's interesting or not. I'm never entirely sure how this little line does its magic, so I'm always just clicking all over the place until it just looks right. And then um, I thought I'd do the same with the yellow colour as well, to give that a bit of variety within the yellow. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick a nice light yellow, and then flip the little arrow down there so that the background comes to the foreground and colour pick the yellow, the original darker yellow. So there I've got dark yellow and a light yellow. Go back to the gradient tool. And now I realise that, that something's wrong because it's it's made a huge a whole um, gradient across the whole thing. So what I need to do is I need to go back to this selection and then I see oh, it doesn't work. So I realised what I need to do is I need to select the yellows and just do it within that selection. There we go. And start to add everything back in. Yeah, kind of interesting. But it's something about this kind of weird greenish legs is not quite right so I'm going to go back to that selection again magic wand it Ooh, add it in press press shift and press it again to add to the selection and maybe that way no why don't we have the light yellow at the, and the heads that might be more interesting add everything back in and her face is quite nicely lit by that yellow, so that's quite an interesting idea. So yeah, um, and then might go back into that green layer and have a little think about that. That's really nice when it's all one sort of colour. Or should it be super contrasty? 
using the kind of idea of complementary colours or using kind of close tones. I'm not sure. It's a really good way to kind of figure out backgrounds and figure out colour choices. And we're looking at the purple there, looking at it quite a long time, but no, going back to the blue and taking it down a notch. Great. Okay, so this could be the idea for a painting. Start with a big yellow wash and a big blue wash. See how we go. Flatten the image. And it's done.